Okay. What's your craziest? Uh, and on that note, what's your craziest tour experience? I guess my most rock and roll experience was uh, was the stunt knockers up in New Hampshire with Josh is from. And it's a different breed of people, but they're still rednecks. But it's like almost more extreme, you know. Like this guy. Really. This evening it started off. We were gonna take this cruise on Lake Sunapee, and uh, it's the lake where the Aerosmith guys met, so uh, they all okay. from around that area. And on this little boat, and, and we uh, and developed a good. Josh is very social and has a lot of friends, and that, that created a huge fan base and bands that he'd been with. So us being up there was like it was a big thing, mm -hmm. and so John O. This crazy woodsman guy is getting ready for the evening, and he's literally has gone up into the damn pine trees. I mean, like tree like that. He has climbed up there. He's up there kicking limbs off for the fire, <laughs> and he jumps from one tree to the next, kicking other limbs off. It's like a flying squirrel. That's yeah, he's a, yeah it's like a flying <laughs> squirrel. And so he you know, was all amped for this this this. Uh, Thing. We got this fire going, and then, then you know everybody's drinking and partying and stuff. Then we get ready for the cruise, and we go out, and the ladies all on the boat. You know, we jam this boat probably holds 85 people. So we got about 150 people on it. It's upstairs and downstairs. So sometimes the boat is going like this. You know, it's leaning. So and, and people would have to just like, no, no, people get over here. No. <laughs> Everybody's like, left. Oh yeah. <laughs> And um, the bartender is this real stuffy lady, and she's all starting to get free because everybody wants a beer. You know, they can't bring their own beer on, but you got a hundred people wanting a beer, and they're going out of the lake, and we're There's starting. One bartender. Yeah, and we're starting to play, so they're already people are kind of getting pissed off. We get out there, and we're supposed to be a two-hour thing. Well, an hour fifteen, an hour and twenty into it, the captain. So this is nuts because people are banging on the ceiling of the thing. I mean, it's just starting to work itself into a frenzy. We've been playing and it's like people are sweating. And then finally these two Australian dudes dove off into the water and we're trying to get back on. My captain just lost it. He called the police and it's a small town. So you had cops from three different counties greeting us when we were coming back in. And uh, the Aust Australian guys apparently had... Uh, swam under something were gone they, they got away from the boat and we're coming in and everybody on the boat's thinking we've been jipped we're supposed to be out here for two hours and they start wrecking the boat and they're just pounding it rah, 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 play more 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 and then the cops are there waiting right when we dock home they're on they're like you know you know stopping people and that guy john i told you about been up in the tree he had been dancing and he's sweaty, so sweaty, it looks like he's been he had jumped in the water. Mm -hmm. And the cops grab him and say, Boy, you're going to jail. It's like, For what? And you know, you're in, it's like, I've been dancing. And, and, and the, the guy's like, Don't talk back to me. And, and this is, you know, the guy, the flying squirrel guy. Yeah. And he's like, like, you know, starts to scream, uh, and then the guy's like, I'm going to tase you. He's like, tase me. And all of a sudden he's like, tase me, tase me. And he walks the cop almost off the pier. He's like, tase me, tase me. Come on, die. You know, next thing you know, there's like 14 people are in jail. You know, it's like, there's, the, the whole thing, you know, it, it was just, oh, it was, it was like, I felt like, a, a, yeah, what, what was that? Sid Vicious and, you know, the, uh, punk man, you know, sex like, pistols. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a minor sex pistols. That was that was one of the crazy craziest gigs. Okay, so I asked some followers on our uh, on our Facebook account. Uh, I put out the question: Hey, does anybody have any questions for Grayson Caps? Uh -huh. These are these are a couple of questions. Like, no, 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 no. I, I actually, like, we had quite a few responses. These are two of the questions we got. Why do you only have a Dutch Wikipedia entry? Which is true. Oh, I've I looked think it's at it. German. Is it's it a Dutch? I, I mean, like I, I looked at it, I definitely did not recognize any <laughs> any words. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I don't know. 
I mean, like who made? Like, do you have any idea I who have, made that? No. I have a German fan club. I think that's. What, I think it might be German <laughs> actually. But uh, yeah, th- th- I, there's not an American Wikipedia entry for you, which I found really, really kind of weird. And I mean, like the, the first thing that comes up when you I search think most people cats. must do their Wikipedia thing themselves or something. I I don't know much about. I'm not very. When I start getting too into the computer, I think I need to do something else because this is sucking my brain. You know, it's like um, so. I, to answer that question, I, I don't know if anybody wants to do one in English. Please do it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just found that really strange because, like, they... <laughs> it's strange to me. I was I was just excited that I had a Wikipedia <laughs> thing at all. I was thinking, man, everybody's got Wikipedia, but me. And then one day I looked, I was like, I've got one. <laughs> I think, I don't know who did this. And the facts are kind of iffy, you know, it's like, all right. Well, I mean, like, it, 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 like, it's decently long, too. Like, whoever did it really put some, like, time into it. Like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah but, like, that, that was one of the cool, that was one of the fan questions we had today. Oh, good one, okay. <laughs> the other was, what do you do to take care of your, and this is quote-unquote, awesome beard, whenever, uh, whenever it's long, and whenever, uh, like, basically, you want to know if you shampoo, you condition it, like, <laughs> someone wants to know what you do with your beard. Uh, Nature's Gate uh, Tea Tree Shampoo and Conditioner. All right, <laughs> that's gonna make somebody really happy. <laughs> Although, yeah, summertime, I don't like that. It's gonna be coming off more. Not here. <laughs> Not shaving. <huh? laughs> Who is the best live band or live bands that you've that you've seen? Like your favorite performances that um, you've actually witnessed. Uh, Nick Cave in Bad City, um, the House of Blues in New Orleans, mm-hmm. probably like eight years ago. Um, Doc Watson, probably about 20 years ago, Tipitina's. I used to work the door at Tipitina's in, in New Orleans. Really? And so I, it's hard to say because I've seen just about everybody you can imagine from, you know, that, that was hitting the circuit like in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, you ever been starstruck meeting somebody? Yeah, that was Nick Cave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's right just on. weird, it was, it was retarded. I was playing in uh, London and uh, I was doing some shows all over England and I had a tour manager and she was saying, you know, if there's anybody you'd like to see while you're here in London, who would you like to see? I was like, it'd be cool to see Nick Cave. I've always been a fan of his. And we're eating at this this kind of health food delicatessen thing, talking about some stuff. And then she goes, she's looking past me like, <laughs> look over your shoulder. And I was like, Wow, it was Nick Cave. You know, it was like their ordinary, ordinary sandwich, you know. <laughs> That's so I go up to him and I'm um, like, hey man, I'm, you know, Grayson Caps, I'm a fan of your music. And I started getting blushing and, you know, it was just like, you know, I see people do that to me, you know, and they're like, I can't believe I'm meeting you. It's like, oh, do you understand what I do understand? I, you know, <laughs> do the same thing as, you know, when I met Nick Cave, you know. And it's retarded, you know, it's all, but it's, it's fun. I like having that energy like I met Tom T. Hall in Nashville, I met Emmy Lou Harris and those are the same kind of things where you like Yeah, you know, Emmy Lou that'd be crazy. Yeah. What are your favorite albums to listen to in, in your downtime? Like when you're just, you know, maybe between gigs, like going to another city or if you're just at home. What are your favorite albums? Like, you know, whole whole album. Um Well I love Doc Watson when I'm not playing it, it, brings me back to square one and uh, so there's a double album called The Essential of Doc Watson that's stuff like Alberta on it and, and uh, one of my favorite albums of all time is Leon Russell's Carney and uh because I just grew up with a real heavy focus on uh like my dad listened to lyrics a lot real heavy lyricists you know you know, I really like um, a lot of stuff with Bob Dylan. I know I'm not mentioning a specific album, but uh, he's one of my favorite artists simply because he refuses to do the same thing over and over. I mean, it's like, you, you, you know, you're three minutes into uh, 
tangled up in blue before you even know what the damn song is doing. I read one time it said that when people are singing along to your music, they're no longer listening. And for him, you know, he's made the choice not to be a dance band, but to be a I mean, singer songwriter, you know, to get a lyrics, you know, message across. Right. And I think, uh, like the Stones, you know, still do the same Set, range almost, of, almost yeah. you know, yeah. whereas Dylan won't, but, you know, he does still go back to the old stuff, but that, you know, that opened the door to uh, Woody Guthrie, to me, and then that opened the door to like Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee and Lightman Hopkins and then you get Howl Wolf and Muddy Waters and that has a whole different it's like haiku, you know, you know, with the minimal lyrics, but they're they're badass, you yeah. know, because they cover so much more than a very verbose writer. You know. Right. And New Orleans music has heavily influenced me. So uh, but I'm from Alabama, and my dad can't clap to a rap song. And those are my genetics. <laughs> but I like, you know, uh, funky, grooving music, but, you know, I have my limitations. <laughs> you know, that, that thing, um, and, and like, uh, I have a song, Ed Lee, it's like, oh, don't, oh, don't. but I mean, that kind of counter thing, I like, I like, uh, a counter rhythm, the back, the offbeat, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, I think John Cleary talks about it where, you know, say, what is funk? It's like, well, funk is where you, you refuse to do the obvious beat. You know, you, you always got the obvious beat, but where you pull it and push it with an offbeat mm -hmm. makes it funky, you know, and you can't rely on always doing the offbeat because then that will be the beat. So you got to you gotta it up, you switch gotta it around, you know, and, and uh, that's kind of where I can, that last record I've come up with the concept of rotten roll. It's like, you know, let's make it rotten, because like, to me it feels rotten when you do that, but it's kind of a method to the madness. One last question. I like to end all my interviews with this, qu this same question. I feel it's like it's profound. Everyone's got a good answer for it. <laughs> that's going to put me on the spot. No, maybe it'd be like, you think it will, it won't. I got, I got a bottle opener if you need it, but I'm sure you don't. I always have, end every interview with this. If you could be any character from Jurassic Park, man or dinosaur, who would you be and why? And I told your son I was going to ask you this, but I told him not to tell you. Oh, wow. Because I'm mostly familiar with that movie we were watching it with my son. When I'm getting him to do something, I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. uh, Laura Dern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for some reason, I would want to answer it. Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on. Just because, uh, probably uh, her character because sometimes I feel like I'm not, I, I tend to, you know, watch a lot of things happen and be part of it and try to be informed, but I'm not the controlling uh, factor in mean, it. It's observing more. The yeah. less orchestrating, I guess. Yeah, and also fragile, too. You know, a lot more fragile than, uh... If you're cross between that or that damn, you know, T-Rex, that they <laughs> from sheep to, you know, because I, I got a part of that in me, too. <laughs> but just like... That, that, some, that's just be, about the best answer I think I've ever gotten. <laughs> Your son's going to be happy to know I asked you to park question. <laughs> I told him, I was like, I was going to ask your dad a question about dinosaurs. What did he say? He's like... <laughs> His eyes got real big, and I was like, don't tell him. <laughs> Alright guys, this has been a great interview with Grayson Caps. This has been one of my favorite interviews of all time. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, this is Modern Rebellion. I'm Chris Skoda, and it's about to storm out here, y'all. So thanks for tuning in. We're, we're very, uh... Most people are, are real by the book. We're not exactly by the book. $35 <laughs> hotel room, $75 for gas. Made a hundred dollars last night, baby. You can do the math. Stay here. Yeah.